With a family of 10 to feed and a priority on from scratch, but simple meals, this kitchen doesn't close very often. Usually when we finish one meal, I'm already working on the next. With a pace like this, meal planning to me can be simply overwhelming. I lean more into a kitchen flow that allows for flexibility of seasons, of plans, and it really works for our family. So this week, I wanna show you what that flow could look like in your own kitchen. So here's the situation. Let's say it's Monday morning. You had a busy weekend and your fridge is looking a little bare. You have the milk you got last Tuesday at milk pickup and it's starting to smell a bit sour. Your sourdough starter is looking a little deflated after you neglected it for the last two weeks. There's a Ziploc bag in the back of the fridge with an einkorn sourdough biscuit, the end pieces of a crusty boule and a couple bagels your toddler took a bite out of. You have no plan nothing is thawed and lunch is mere hours away. Now, of course, there are infinite directions you could go with the food choices this week based on seasonality, what's on sale, what's in your freezer, but we're gonna go through a sample weekly rhythm here. Okay, day one in the flow of the kitchen. Breakfast is oatmeal custard. This is my sneaky way of getting more eggs into my kids' diet since I added way too many chicks to our flock last spring. It's perfect for a Monday morning when I don't have a lot of sourdough starter to make crepes or pancakes. Plus I keep large quantities of oats, honey, raisins, and butter on hand. This one won't have milk or cream, but that's okay. Get your sourdough starter out of the fridge and feed it heavily with einkorn flour. You almost can't overfeed a healthy established starter. We're feeding it with a healthier flour because this will be used to make discard recipes this week. Next, grab a nine by 13 glass dish and fill it with meat from your freezer. A package of pork chops, two pounds of ground beef, two pounds of ground sausage, two whole chickens, a pack of soup bones, and a chuck roast. You almost can't get out too much because if it's thawed, you'll find a way to cook it and eat it. When you're making three meals a day at home, you need a lot of food. If you have meat left in the dish by the end of the week, which happens to me on some rare occasions when the week was busier than I expected, you can cook it and freeze it. Pour the almost sour milk into your Instant Pot and press the saute function. Once it is super hot, pull the stainless liner out of the Instant Pot so it can cool faster. Once it's not hot to the touch, add some yogurt or whey from a previous batch or a yogurt starter. Press the yogurt function and allow it to ferment. After it has fermented for eight to 24 hours, the time up to your sourness preference, put it in the refrigerator. Alternatively, you can make milk kefir. This is all just a way to use up the rest of that sour milk before restocking. Next, cut all of your bits of leftover sourdough baked goods into cubes and put them on a baking tray. Toast in a hot oven until they're crispy. I can't tell you a temp here because we're getting used to the kitchen flow and learning how things smell, look, and feel. When the kitchen is intuitive, everything runs more smoothly. After they've cooled, pulse them in the blender until they're crumbs, store in a quart size mason jar. In our home, Mondays are all about resetting everything. So using up any little bit of something we didn't use last week, getting the meat all ready for the week, getting our ducks in a row so we can keep on with that flow all throughout the upcoming week. For lunch today, salmon patties are on the menu. They fry up quickly in coconut oil. It can be served with potatoes and sauerkraut. Two things we always have on hand, even if the refrigerator is looking bare. I like salmon patties on a Monday for lunch just because at this point, I don't have anything thought out. I don't have any plan. I'm relying on those pantry staples. I have some breadcrumbs from last week, so I'm tossing together a couple cans of salmon, a couple eggs, which we always have in stock, salt, pepper, patting that together and frying it up. We don't do a whole lot of snacks here in our home, but the ones that we rely on over and over again are popcorn popped in coconut oil, salt, and nutritional yeast, dried, freeze-dried, or fresh fruit, raw cheddar cheese, hard-boiled eggs, yogurt with honey and fruit, nuts, granola with raw milk, sourdough toast with a little bit of peanut butter. These are all healthy, easy options. One of my favorite ways to stock my pantry and prepare for a weekly flow in our kitchen is by shopping on Thrive Market. Thrive Market is an online grocery store that specializes in natural and organic ingredients and pantry staples. They also have quality organic frozen goods. I personally love the Thrive Market brand and buy everything from organic condiments to spices and pasta and flour. I love that on the Thrive Market website, you can sort by dietary preference. It makes for a very streamlined, easy shopping experience that is convenient. So if you are paleo, 
gluten-free, dairy-free, you can sort to only see those options. There's also a deals section that I like to browse through every once in a while to see if there are things in there that we want to try or things we already use that we can stock up on. Now that we have our basement pantry, I order so much stuff and just stock it down there so that I'm always ready to make something for my large family without having to always be running to the grocery store. Thrive Market is membership based, so you can either pay by year, $59.95, that will save you quite a bit of money, or you can try it out month to month to see if there are some things that you're already using that are a better price over on Thrive Market. That month to month option is billed at $12 a month. Orders over $49 ship for free. There is no better time to try out Thrive Market because right now you can shop their biggest sale of the summer this week and save on thousands of top products when using my link to get 30% off your order. Thrivemarket.com forward slash farmhouse on boon. Again, 30% off your order plus a free gift worth up to $60. Oh, it's cool. Go, Theo. Danny. We did get out some soup bones this morning and put that in the 9 by 13 dish. Going to get those going into an enameled cast iron Dutch oven with any veggie scraps that are in the fridge, garlic, celery, onions, carrots, add water, cover with a lid, and put it on simmer on the back burner of the stove. Okay, we still don't have anything for dinner. So far, everything we've made is just prep for another day this week. On a lot of Mondays, there are several glass containers, each filled with small amounts of leftovers from the few days prior. But if that is not the case, I'll pop one of my faster thawing meats in hot water. Ground beef in one pound packages will thaw enough to brown in less than 10 minutes. Looks like it's tacos for dinner tonight. We have shredded cheese and kraut to throw on top. Plus, of course, right now it is gardening season, so we can also do a homemade salsa. Step nine on this Monday hypothetical scenario flow of the kitchen, which is becoming real this week, not hypothetical, is go to the grocery store or place a pickup or delivery order for some of your fresh items this week. This is one place I like to spend a bit more cautiously so nothing goes to waste, but I stock those root vegetables, long storage things, and pantry staples with reckless abandon. Of course, if it is summer, which it is, head to the garden or farmer's market for some of those fresh items. This is the heaviest kitchen day in this entire weekly scenario, this kitchen flow, setting ourselves up for the rest of the week of not meal planning, but still having fresh meals on the table. It's summer right now, and so I don't like to spend a whole lot of time in the kitchen. I don't have a lot of time to spend in the kitchen. My main goal is to have options, so no matter where the plans and activities lead, we have something. Jumping into day two, remember all of that sourdough starter you fed yesterday? Well, today you're making pancakes. If you have a small family, you'll use up two cups, but you'll need four plus if you have a lot of eaters. We did feed it with that einkorn flour because this is a recipe that relies solely on sourdough starter. You don't add any additional flour. You add some eggs and baking soda, honey, salt, a few other things, but the primary grain is the sourdough starter. So that's why we fed it with einkorn yesterday. The next step is to get sourdough bread going. Mix up 475 grams each of whole grain flour and all purpose flour add in 200 grams of sourdough starter, 650 grams of water, and 20 grams of salt. Your starter should be fairly active since you fed it yesterday. It's okay to use einkorn starter in the bread because remember that's what the starter is fed with right now. Throughout the morning, perform stretch and folds every 20 minutes or so until you've done six. The dough should be smooth and elastic. Allow it to bulk from it throughout the day. All right, we're doing a cold lunch today. Actually, I'm doing a cold lunch, but I'm doing this in a hypothetical scenario of how you could keep your kitchen flowing. Hard boil some eggs, slice up raw cheddar, cut a few carrots into sticks, make sourdough discard crackers if you're feeling fancy. I was, so I just took some sourdough starter, mixed up with a little bit of butter. You could do olive oil, spread it thin, add some salt, bake it. It gives a nice crispy element to a cold lunch. The pork chop should be about thawed by now. They went into the nine by 13 yesterday. They're one of the faster thawing meats, so that's why I will cook something like this earlier in the week. So we're going to put those breadcrumbs to good use. Crack a few eggs into a small bowl, pour breadcrumbs into another bowl and sprinkle them with salt. Dredge the pork chops in the eggs and then the breadcrumbs. Place them in a large skillet filled with an inch of preheated pork lard. Fry on each side until they're crispy on the outside and done on the inside. Serve them with mashed potatoes and canned green beans. I guess we're still out of milk in this scenario, but you can doctor them up with lots of butter, a little homemade yogurt, and salt. Add herbs if you have them from your garden. Just got that sourdough starter back in the fridge. We'll revisit that later and restocked with milk. I'm shaping up the bread I got started in the morning, getting it in banna tins and into the fridge overnight. So now we have 
bread that's ready to go. We've got the fridge stock with the fresh stuff, the milk, the rest of the week should flow nicely. Day three, we're having frozen fruit, yogurt, smoothies, and fried eggs for breakfast. Here's how we like to make them in our house. Fill the blender halfway with yogurt or kefir. Add frozen raspberries, blueberries, strawberries, bananas, or any combination thereof. Add some honey and vanilla collagen peptides. We'll also add a greens powder. Next, it's time to bake sourdough bread from yesterday. Preheat the oven on 500 degrees with a Dutch oven for an hour. Get one bandit out of the fridge and place the dough onto a piece of parchment. Score the loaf and bake for 20 minutes with the lid on and 20 minutes with the lid off. Repeat with the other loaf. Lunch today is salami and raw cheddar on sourdough with homemade mayo. Put an egg in a wide mouth mason jar, add a little mustard, lemon juice, and salt. Pour avocado oil on top. Now truly there is no need to measure. Put the immersion blender all the way into the jar so it almost touches the bottom. Blend until the egg is emulsified. Then pull the blender up a bit to incorporate the rest of the oil. I also like to set out some pickled onion, sauerkraut, and avocado with the sandwiches. We also do have plenty of tomatoes from the garden. So of course that's going to make it on top of the sandwich as well. The soup bones I put into the cast iron Dutch oven yesterday were quite meaty. So I'm removing the meat and then putting the bones back in. I'll continue to add bones throughout the week and keep this simmering. But for now I will put that meat in the fridge. We'll use that later. The whole chicken that I put into the refrigerator on Monday is finally thawed out now. So I drizzled it with a bit of olive oil sprinkled with salt, pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder and put it in a 400 degree oven until it was crispy and well done while the chicken was cooking i started risotto with all of the broth that i had been simmering on the stove it's the perfect way to use that up and add some nutrition just keep stirring and adding small amounts of broth to the rice to give it that creamy consistency we top it with a bit of shredded parmesan and herbs from the garden next picked the rest of the chicken off the bones put those bones into the broth pot added a bit more water and returned it back to the back burner now I'm getting that starter back out of the fridge and feeding it heavily for some homemade pizza tomorrow. This time I decided to use freshly milled hard white wheat. Knew you could do it. Day four, breakfast is sourdough toast, avocado, eggs fried in a bit of butter and a glass of raw milk. Makes for a nutritious and filling breakfast. I always keep everything bagel seasoning on hand so I'm sprinkling that on top as well. It's super good. For lunch today, sourdough discard pizzas are perfect to make with all of that whole grain sourdough starter from yesterday evening. So I preheat two cast iron skillets in the oven at 500 degrees. Actually, I did three. Once they're hot, I drizzle with olive oil, add a few cups of starter to each one, spread the starter out into a thin layer and up the sides of the skillet, then return it to the oven to cook until each crust can easily be popped out of the skillet. Now, if you have a well-seasoned cast iron skillet, this should work great. I'm browning up the pound of sausage that was in my nine by 13 dish, spreading each crust with pizza sauce and shredded mozzarella, letting that return to the oven and get nice and melty and then topping it with the sausage. You could also add some veggies from the garden. Again, the flexibility, the options, that's what we're going for here. After lunch cleanup, it's time to get that chuck roast going in the instant pot. This takes several days to thaw, so it's a good midweek option. I press the saute function and wait for it to get hot. Add butter, sear the roast on all sides in the butter to lock in the juices. Then I dip out a cup of broth from the stock pot, add it to the instant pot, cook on high pressure for an hour, and then just allow that pressure to slowly release and go to warm until it's time for dinner. The longer it sits in there, the more tender it will become. I have a little bit of extra time in the afternoon, so this is a good time to make a simple granola. I pulse pecans and walnuts in a blender or food processor until they're coarsely chopped, add the nuts to a large bowl along with rolled oats, coconut oil, honey, shredded coconut, and a little cinnamon and salt. I bake at 350 degrees until it's toasty. I like to say this all the time, just to simplify granola making. You really don't need a recipe. You're essentially taking cereal stuff, whether you have oats or coconut or nuts or any combination thereof, toss it with some kind of oil. We do prefer coconut because it's a good quality oil and sweetener. You can use honey, you can use date syrup, you can use sugar. As long as you have a fat that will toast the grain and something to sweeten it with, you can really get away with a lot of different options. I try to remember the simple formula so that no matter what I have, I can whip up a batch of granola. After it's cool, I toss in some kind of dried fruit. Today I have raisins and store it in a gallon jar. We will go through this so darn fast. When we have granola, 
We go through it because it makes for a really easy snack or breakfast. I'm cutting carrots into long strips and putting them on a rim baking sheet with balsamic vinegar, maple syrup, and olive oil. They will be great alongside the chuck roast. Another thing I like to do whenever I make a chuck roast is take all of the fat and the drippings from the Instant Pot and make a simple gravy. So to do that, I take some butter and flour, cook that together in a little pot. I don't really measure because you can always add more flour if it's not thick enough. And then add the drippings from the Instant Pot. Cook it until it's nice and thick. Add a little bit of salt and pepper. You don't have to do this, but you will be glad you did because if you have some mashed potatoes and carrots, it's so good to just put that gravy over top of everything. We are on day five of a kitchen flow without meal planning, getting through the week, eating from scratch without really knowing what we're doing here. Granola and raw milk with sliced bananas is on the menu for breakfast this morning. And then for lunch today, we're doing breakfast for lunch. We do this quite often. Today I'm making biscuits and gravy with one of the pounds of sausage, the second pound that was in that nine by 13 dish earlier this week. First I brown the sausage, add a little bit of flour to sop up that fat. I add milk and continue cooking and stirring until the gravy is thickened. I add salt and pepper to taste and then make up a batch of my einkorn biscuits. You can serve this with fried eggs, sauerkraut, and avocado. I know I serve just about everything with these things, with sauerkraut, with whatever vegetables are in the garden, and with avocado. They're just easy things to pull out of the fridge and serve with a meal to make it bulky and more filling. I think being able to make a quick gravy like we did with the roast and for this sausage gravy is a great skill to have in the kitchen. I'm planning to share a video in a couple of weeks here where I talk about the skills you need to have a kitchen flow to feel very confident and move through the kitchen without having to stop and read complicated recipes, without having to plan everything to a T or stock things in your kitchen that you wouldn't otherwise use and end up with a bunch of things that go to waste. This has been something that's really helped me in my home and in our grocery budget and in cooking for our family. Greek yogurt would be nice to have on hand. So I'm adding yogurt to a flour sack towel, tying up the ends with jute twine and hanging it on a kitchen hook or in the pantry over a bowl to catch the whey. I'll let that sit for a couple hours until it's very thick and then reserve the whey in the glass jar for using as a yogurt starter later in the week whenever we're repeating this whole kitchen flow. We have sour milk again, keeping the whole flow going. The broth has been going for, well, it's day five now, so for quite a while, I feel like I've stripped every last nutrient from the bones, so it's time to strain it off and take a break for a few days. Plus, it's almost the weekend, and Luke and I plan to go on a date night tomorrow night, so the kitchen's getting semi-shut down for a couple of days. Broth off the stove, sourdough starter in the fridge. I still have a whole chicken in the fridge, so I'm spatchcocking it and roasting it along with some root vegetables on one big rim baking sheet. A one pot dinner for the win on this busy night. I look in the fridge and notice that the sourdough starter was put away a bit full. I wanna reduce it down before feeding it next, so I decide to make crepes. I add a cup of cold sourdough starter, 10 eggs, a cup of milk, a little honey and salt to a bowl, blend it with an immersion blender and cook it on a well-seasoned cast iron skillet or a nonstick skillet. I also skim some raw cream for whipped cream and stuff it with sliced bananas. Any fruit is delicious in this. I still have one pound of ground beef and some broth in the fridge, so cheeseburger soup makes for an easy lunch today. I also had some bacon in there, so I'll dice some of that and serve that with the soup along with a dollop of that homemade Greek yogurt. In the afternoon, I decided it'd be nice to have bagels tomorrow morning before church. Technically, you're supposed to use bubbly and active sourdough starter, but I never really follow that rule anyway, and it always turns out fine. It may take a little longer to rise, but I have a solid 16 hours until I'll need to shape the dough anyway, so I have plenty of time. I add the ingredients to a stand mixer with a dough hook and mix it until it all comes together. Cover the mixer bowl with foil and forget about it in the pantry until tomorrow. No dinner tonight because it is date night. Day seven, bagels, eggs, and chocolate milk are for breakfast. Shape the bagels and put them in a warm spot. Meanwhile, get a pot of water boiling, add baking soda and brown sugar. I still have a little bit too much milk left, trying to get ready for that next milk pickup. So I blend it with frozen bananas, chocolate collagen, cocoa powder, and honey. This is a surefire way to use up a lot of milk when you have little ones. We have potluck at church today. I still have tons of leftover beef, not only from those soup bones, but also leftover from the roast. So I fill corn tortillas that I've grilled on each side in butter. 
with the beef, add some cheddar cheese, roll them up, bake them right before potluck. We have an oven at church. We also did some homemade salsa from the garden. Phew, what a week. Let me know if the flow in your kitchen goes similar to this. Thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse.